What's going on everybody? Kenan here and it's time for another question of yours to be answered. Now these questions come from our friends over at Patreon. Uh, there are supporters for the channel. If you guys want to become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com slash campkenan and join up because you'll get content that you can't find anywhere else. And of course, we'll get to ask some of your questions right here on the main channel. Uh, today's question comes from Karen B. And I'm going to cheat again. So Karen says, hey Cannon, do you ever come across any tortoises that don't self-regulate their temperature, such as going to the hot spot when they get cold? Hope this makes sense. I'm the opposite of you. I'm good at maths, but bad with letters. They never make sense. Karen B, thank you so much for reaching out and asking you a question. Um, don't worry about it. Uh, I uh, don't mind. I understood what you meant. Uh, we're looking here at some leopard tortoises, right? And right now these guys uh, are just kind of hanging out, right? They're in the sun because we just had a rainstorm, so they're trying to warm up. Uh, it's very important to understand your animal's behaviors. Uh, very, very important. Uh, as you'll see later in this video, guys, there's a reason why it's important. And uh, I'm definitely going to go into it with you all. We're going to walk on over here. Hey, look at this. There's some of the snow leopards right now. There's one of the wonky that's Willy Wonky right there. Uh, and he's out in the sun. But basically, a uh, turtle or tortoise is going to move in and out of the different temperature gradients if it is healthy. That's actually something very important to understand. Uh, in fact, as we'll see here in just a little bit, you're gonna understand why that's so important and why it's so important for you guys to really understand your animals. So basically, if you get the behavior, where is everybody, hold on a second. If you get their behavior down, meaning, for example, here's another snow leopard that's hiding out, but I know this animal was walking around earlier today before the rain, so it went and it's, it basically was just looking for shelter from the rain. Now, if this animal were staying here for a very long time, like days, I would start to get concerned. If it was not moving, that's a problem, okay? So a tortoise that isn't moving in and out of the different, different temperature gradients, or turtle as well, uh, any reptile really, is going to be actually a good sign that the animal is not healthy okay so it's very important that you are always hands-on with your animals that you're always making sure they're moving and eating and doing what comes naturally to them now tortoises should have those bright eyes they should be moving in and out of temperature gradients they should be grazing they should be active if they're lethargic and not doing much all the time, then that's a problem, guys. And that's usually an indicator that something is not right with the animal itself. So I wanna make sure you guys are always watching your animals. So Karen, if you've got a tortoise that used to move around a lot, but unfortunately you notice ah, it's not kind of going into its heated, heated area or it's not getting out of the heat, that definitely tells me that the animal has a problem. They, they are either staying in the heat to try and raise their body temperature to kill any kind of internal parasites or pathogens or something like that, or they don't have enough energy to get into the heat, so they're always staying in one spot. Um, stress can cause a lot of illnesses. Many different things can kind of cause tortoises to feel unwell. Here are the sulcatas. Now, why am I bringing you up to the sulcatas? You guys remember I moved them a couple weeks ago. Here they all are. Well, I have a situation that has happened and uh, I'm kind of concerned about it. So, you guys know my big boy Lumpy, right? Lumpy is one of my oldest sulcatas. He's just an amazing animal. I've never had a problem with him for the 15 years that I actually had this animal. Unfortunately, I noticed that Lumpy wasn't moving. I went and saw him. I noticed he was laying in that spot all day. And I said, all right, let me just see. I went over to him. Uh, he had no interest in food. And then I said, all right, I'm going to let him stay over here in the overnight and try him again in the morning. I tried him again, still not moving. So what does that tell me? Something's up with Lumpy. Here he is right now, guys. So I put Lumpy inside this giant Rubbermaid tub. And what I've been doing and what I have to do here in a moment is I've got to soak him. 
Uh, I went to Bush Wildlife, we got some x-rays from Lumpy and it looks like he is digestion, his digestion is slowed down. Okay, so there was a lot of fecal matter inside of his body. Now there's always gonna be some fecal matter. We did notice what looked like possible gas bubbles. So what's going on with his intestines? What's happening? Um, this is the key that I have to try and figure out. The first thing I wanna do, some simple remedies, is to try and soak him. Soak him, soak him, soak him for hours and I put Epsom salts inside this tub as well. Obviously, I don't have him outside because he's not moving. I don't want him to get overheated, but we do have him in a comfortable temperature right here. It's about 80 degrees inside this warehouse. So what's going on is I'm gonna fill this up, okay, with some warm water and add some Epsom salts, and I'm gonna continue to soak him for the next few days. I have also called another close friend who is a vet, and I'm probably gonna bring Lumpy to the vet as well, just to see if there's anything else we can do. I called my good buddy, Sam Piscucci. He told me to get those Epsom salts in the water because it acts as a laxative if he does drink. I haven't noticed him drinking, so I'm definitely concerned. Uh, this tortoise is very, very special to me, and I wanna make sure I do absolutely everything I can to try and help him out. So basically, um, the, we tried to get some mineral oils inside his mouth, but he's still extremely strong, and I wasn't able to get a tube down his throat, so I'm gonna need some extra hands to help me out with this. So basically, I'll have to keep you guys updated with Lumpy, because uh, it is just, man, it's been a rough couple of days. I also noticed that I had an elongated tortoise that had some kind of what I think were fly strikes on his throat, let me show you. This guy I feel a lot better about because I cleaned him out. But I was, again, walking around in my enclosures, okay? Walking around in the enclosures, I noticed this guy's throat was extremely swollen. So that was not normal. And of course, he wasn't moving around a lot. I'm gonna flip him upside down for a little bit. He's got a little bit of newspaper stuck to him, it's okay. Um, I'm really actually happy about this guy now because I was able to, you can see there's some lacerations here. His throat was even way more swollen. So what I had to do is I had to get a special syringe and I cleaned out this infected mass. It was basically an abscess in his throat. What you guys are seeing is actually the medicine that's oozing out because I've injected it into the abscess to help speed up recovery. Once I, I debrided all the dead tissue and I got down to the, to the new flesh, I went ahead and I irrigated it out with some, uh, some nice sterile water, some saline, got that irrigated out, and then I jam-packed it with some Silvadine cream, which is a really good antibacterial, uh, and then, you know, it, it acts as a, you know, kind of like, well, like I said, an antibacterial. The good news is, is this guy's been eating. I'm just, of course, keeping him separated. He's got a little bit of boogers from the nose, which is no big deal, uh, as long as they're eating. So this swelling has gone down nicely in the last few days. So it's just a lot of work, guys, and you've gotta be very, uh, you gotta pay attention to your animals. I'm gonna have to get some new newspaper for them as well. So I'll get on that immediately after this video. But yeah, guys, um, it's a lot of work, okay? Uh, so it's something that you gotta consider and you have to pay attention, like I said, to the animals. They're gonna tell you everything they need to tell you, but you need to learn how to speak turtle, tortoise, Lizard, snake, you gotta understand their behaviors and really know when something's going wrong. So Lumpy here, you could just tell by his little face, he's not looking too happy at all, is he? I can just look in his eyes and I just see a little bit of a, of a depressed state. This animal should be clamoring to get out of this bucket. This guy is always walking around showing everyone who's boss. He's the most energetic tortoise. I raised him up when he was only a few inches long. So he's a, a very, very special animal to me. He came all the way from some friends in Long Island, New York, and I don't want anything to happen to him. So like I said, soak him the Epsom salts. We're going to try and tube them to get some mineral oil in there, see if we can loosen up that fecal matter. Um, what causes this? What causes a tortoise who's been so healthy to all of a sudden slow down? Well, you guys know that I moved the tortoises recently. Um, they were living in the back for a long time. Now, part of the reason I moved them, number one, is because I need the space, right? But the other reason is, is it gets really wet back there. And I thought, well, 
dehydration can slow these guys down. But upon talking to my good buddy uh, Sam Piscucci yesterday, I realized there's so much standing water there that if they're drinking, the potential for them to get a protozoa or some kind of gut parasite is greater. So I wanted to move them into an area that doesn't have a lot of standing water. This water just happened because it just rained. So this water usually just, it's higher and drier over here. But the problem is, is those protozoa can affect the way they digest. It can slow down their digestion. And when these animals, which are eating uh, vegetable matter, have a change in their gut flora, which is basically the, the bacteria that uh, flora, flora and fauna in there and the bacteria uh, in the stomach, it actually could uh, slow them down and change their ability to break down the food or slow the GI tract down. Uh, here's one of the females, she's hanging out. Everyone else seems to be doing fine. But again, we don't know for sure. I have consulted a vet. I'm waiting on his call back. We're gonna do a whole thing where I'm gonna bring him there. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna film it. I'm not sure if this veterinarian allows that. I'm gonna try it, but I will give you guys an update uh, as to what's going on with my man Lumpy because I love that tortoise. He's the big dog here. I've had him the longest out of any other sulcata and I just wanna make sure that he's doing all right. So I wanted to give you guys the answer to Karen V's question. Make sure that you guys are doing your laps around your property or just uh, if you don't have a property like this and you're just working with animals um, indoors in a smaller collection, make sure that you guys just pay close attention to the animal's behavior. The first sign that things aren't right you may want to separate the animal, which is what I did, because if he's got something, I don't want him to spread it to anyone else. You separate the animals and you basically see, and you start doing a little bit of first aid or kind of guessing, research, reading, watching videos like this, trying to kind of guess what might be the cause of the problem. The next thing you got to do almost immediately is get your butts going with uh, the vet. You got to make sure that you get some veterinary care for these animals. You don't want them to just die over a long, drawn out period of time because that's what happens with tortoises. Um, they get sick and they can just take a long time to die and we don't want that to happen to Lumpy. All right, everyone, so stay tuned. I'll be sure to have some updates. Thank you, Karen, for your support on Patreon and everybody out there who supports on Patreon. If you're not a Patreon supporter, please go there. Go to patreon.com slash and you guys can get more answers to your questions, more content, things that you don't normally see on any of our other social media platforms. I wanna say thank you so much to everyone who likes and subscribes. Don't forget to hit your notifications to make sure you guys know when new videos are coming out. And uh, that's gonna do it. I'll talk to you guys soon. And uh, thanks for watching.